guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna make a summer dress that I've been waiting to make. We're gonna do a lace-up back but we're not gonna do just a simple lace-up back. I'm gonna show you the best tool to actually put grommets in and you guys have asked me about this tool for a long time so I'm super excited to finally show you what I have been hiding <laughs> and what I've been trying out in the background. So super excited for that. Stay tuned to see what I'm talking about and let's get started. So I did my sketch as per usual. As you can see right here, I also put some fabric swatches into my booklet. And now this fabric is super exciting because it has a color gradient, as you can see right here. Like it goes from dark to lighter turquoise, which is super exciting. So we're gonna play around with that, this gradient for our bodice and the whole dress itself. So that's gonna be super cute, I hope. I already cut out my fabric. You can see it a little bit but basically what I'm aiming for is a gradient around the upper body from dark to lighter and that's also how I cut out my fabric pieces. I asked you guys on Insta, let me quickly add this camera to the frame, so I asked you guys which color combination you like best. So like which color of boning channel you like best with the fabric color. And these were the four options that I gave you. And most of you said this green, which I'm super happy about because that's also what I like best. I hope I have enough bias binding because I didn't make this myself, like I bought it. So I have a limited amount. <laughs> Hopefully there is enough. Next time, if you want to be involved in any of my votings that I'm doing, go ahead and follow me on Instagram because in my stories, that's where I'm doing all of this stuff and that's where you can decide with me what to do for my next project. So link is in the description down below. So I went ahead and laid out half of the bodice and this is how it goes. It's front, side front, side back, back and then the lacing panel for one half and then you do the other side the same. And when I remove the pattern pieces you can actually see the gradient how pretty it looks and then just imagine the other side just going to dark and it's just going to be really really pretty. I added a backing I don't know if you can still see this but it's like this bluish kind of color then I also added some interfacing I actually added pretty strong interfacing to this and what we're simply going to do as for every bodice we're just going to put the dividing seams here together we're going to leave the lace up panel seam is what it's called. So we're gonna not add the lacing panel to this whole bodice yet because we're gonna you know have to work on it a bit more and that's where I'm gonna show you the magic as well. So let's actually put all of these seams together. I'm gonna start with the front dividing seam and that means that I'm gonna put front and side front pieces together. If you don't help the pieces to go together they won't. So what I like to do for this is to cut into the seam allowance of the straighter piece, so the side front. So you just want to do that into the seam allowance. You're not going to go any further than that. Not forget about your other notch down here. And now as you can see it just opens up and you can put it right onto the front piece. That's what this does and it's super helpful. I do that for basically all of my curved pieces that don't go together. And then up here you do the same like that and now you can close the front dividing seam. You're going to do the same for the other side and then we're going to work our way towards the back panel. Keep in mind that you want to leave the left side seam open. So for me that is the lighter side as you can see right here. So I'm not going to put the side seam onto my piece here. I'm going to leave this seam open. This is the side seam. So I'm just going to put these together and for the darker side I'm just going to put all of the pieces together minus the lacing panel. Do not put the lacing panel on it yet. <laughs> so for ironing there are a few things that I wanted to show you as well because we have the curve of the bust obviously so I want to cut out a few triangles out of the seam allowance in order for the seam allowances to just lay nicer. So if you cut out these triangles every two centimeters or so it basically makes 
room for the edge of the seam allowance, which is longer than the seam itself because it's curved, it just makes room to lay flat. Otherwise, it's just gonna bunch up and it's not gonna lay nicely. And you're gonna see that, especially for fabrics like my Georgette or any other lighter fabrics. You can even see it through like cotton fabrics. So that is something that I always recommend. And now we can use our tailor's ham. And I just like to use my curve here and fold it right over top. And you can see that it fits perfectly onto this curve here. And then I'm just gonna iron the seam allowance towards the side piece like that. And now you have a perfectly ironed seam and in my opinion that's so important like ironing one of the most important things while sewing like next to sewing basically and that's how you get a perfect finish we're gonna do the same for this side as well okay now you can very nicely see the gradient it looks so cool kind of has like this watery feel to it because of the blue now what we're gonna do next is actually add the boning channels and i added some guidelines that you can use you don't have to you can also make this up yourself for the boning channels like this the gray lines right there. I'm going to add the center front line down the middle of my front piece because this has to be straight. I'm actually gonna go ahead and mark the end points so that I have at least somewhat of a reference and now these go very curved into like the side panel and that's all of my boning channels marked out and I'm also going to add them on like the seams here like the side seam and the back dividing seam in the side seam here we're going to have a zipper so there is not going to be a boning channel maybe I'm going to place the boning channel for the right side also like not on the side seam but next to it so that I can mirror that design to the left side where the zipper sits so otherwise it's going to be looking probably weirdly if you have like a boning channel here and not one here and it also warps the dress because it's not boned symmetrically so let's go ahead and add the boning channels here i'm going to use my bias tape that i already mentioned which i'm going to fold in half again so i'm just going to have like this eight millimeter wide boning channel right here and i'm going to sit right and left off it and i'm going to do that for all these pieces right here where it connects into the other boning channel I'm going to sew the shorter one first so that I can cover the edge right here with the other one and then I can also finish basically that boning channel so first the small one then the big one Okay, so this is what it looks like. As you can see, the boning channels kind of curve inwards here at the bust area, and that's hopefully going to give you somewhat of a push. They're going to be covered up eventually, so you're not going to see them, but you know, that's just a functional thing, and it also looks nice. If you were to not cover this up, this is what it looks like, and it also is, in my opinion, a fairly flattering layout of boning channels. Speaking of boning, let's actually bone this bodice. I have a fair bit of plastic boning. This is fine millimeters wide hopefully this is gonna fit in all of the channels it always depends on how nicely you sew them in so what I like to do for this you, there are a, a couple of methods that you can do but I'm just going to melt the edges so that it's not like poking through and that it's like nice and round like this and then I can insert them into the channels. So I'm gonna sew at 1.2 centimeters all around the neckline. I'm gonna do a basting stitch, so a very large stitch that I can take out in the end. And that's just gonna help the boning like have an end point. And it's not gonna go any further than that. Hence, no boning in the seam allowances. And as you can see, it's right here. So I did not backstitch at all. I just like did a basting stitch here. And that's how I'm going to insert my boning channels now. So let's start in the very middle. So I'm gonna measure all the way down here. And here I'm also going to go 1.2 centimeters inwards from the edge so that I have no bonings poking into my seam allowance at all. And I'm also going to melt the edges and now I can go ahead and insert it. So they sit very snug, which is good. Hopefully I can go ahead and get them into the curved ones right here because that's gonna be a bit tricky. So I'm gonna work my way towards the curved ones and then I'm gonna show you how I actually do that. 
I am actually going to use my lighter to curve my boning. This obviously only works if you're working with synthetic boning, like plastic boning, like this one. So if you have steel boning, like the spiral one, it's gonna curve anyways. But if you have like flat steel boning, this is not gonna work. So what I'm doing here is like kind of eyeing the length of the boning that I need. And then I'm going to put it right here and check where the curve kind of sits. So I want to take my lighter and kind of heat up this area right here so that I am able to curve it like this to the curve of my boning channel. Do not touch the channel or like the piece itself with the boning when it's still melted because it might transfer it to your piece. And once it's cooled down, it's fine. You can also touch it and then you can see whether it's curved enough or whether you need a tiny bit more. It seems like it's enough for me here. And then you wanna go down here where the other curve sits and you wanna do the same again and curve it to the other side. And you can see that it is not curved perfectly yet. I see that I need to curve it this way as well here. And maybe down here a tiny bit. And I think that should be fine. And now I can just easily insert it into my bony channels. And that's basically the only one that's super curvy. This one right here is a bit curvy, but it's still like kind of straight. So this one here next to the bust is like the very crazy one. So you want to really take your time and melt your boning to the shape that it needs to be in. And now I'm just going to continue working my way like through all the boning channels to bone the whole corset. Okay, now that the whole bodice is boned, we can go ahead and add the lacing panels. And that is where the magic happens, let me tell you. So I have these two panels right here. We're going to prepare the lacing panels just a bit. So what I want to do is add the placements of the garments to the inside of my lacing panel. So I'm just going to draw in my fold line and now I can go ahead and add the grommets. What I like to do is just use a hole puncher and literally punch a hole in the middle of the grommet placements so that I can use my pen to just mark it on the fabric like that. I'm just going to place it on the inside and then just use a pen to mark it. So what I want to show you now is actually a amazing tool that I've been working with for a longer period of time. I actually have this since I think March, I'm not sure yet. So I've been testing it out since a few months. And let me tell you, I am super, super excited because never ever have I made grommets that perfect continuously. Like whenever you use some other tool like tongs or whatever, where you do it by hand like this, the grommets kind of always come out wonky. And you know, there are these like huge metal iron tools that are obviously like super heavy and big and expensive. So I've never had any tool that just is perfect for me and does perfect grommets until now. <laughs> so this right here is the Vario Creative Tool right here by Prim that I've been testing out and that I am super excited about. And this does it all. Like it is a hole puncher, it is a grommet inserter, it does push buttons and it's amazing. So this is compatible with all of the Vario creative tong tools that you can insert into here so you can use them as well. And I'm gonna show you how I'm actually using this. First things first is I have my lace up panel right here and I mark the dots because I want to add these pieces right here. They're called power dots. So they're pre-cut interfacing dots basically. I have an open package right here where you can see it. So you basically just take them out like this and place them on top here, press them, and then you have like interfacing right here for the grommets to make them even stronger. And with these in place, I can go ahead and prepare the lace-up panel as per usual to insert the grommets. So what you want to do is finish the upper edges right here. So I'm just going to fold them right sides together and sew right here and right here so that we can uh, flip this right sides out with everything in place. Cut off the seam allowance here in this diagonal way so that when I flip this right sides out there is no like bunching up. 
And now I can also go ahead and press this flat like this. And now I have all of the power dots sitting on the inside here, exactly where I'm gonna place my grommets. I don't know if you can see it from the shine, you kinda can. So that's perfect. And now what I want to do is actually mark the placements of my grommets on my piece itself. So I'm gonna do the same as I did for the inside. I'm gonna place my pattern piece right here and then mark the center with a marker. Now I'm gonna show you how to insert the grommets with the Vario Creative Tool. So to insert my grommets, this is all that I need. So my Vario Creative Tool, and then I need the prim tool set for eyelets with washers. So this is important that you have eyelets that consist of two parts, which are these ones. So these are the grommets that I will be using. The diameter of the inside is 11 millimeters. As you can see, you have the grommet and then a washer, which you'll insert into your piece. Before that, we're gonna use the hole punching set which is this on this side. And what you do is just open it, it kind of like holds it itself up here. You just put this in and the other one down here and then you can get started. So basically you just put in your, your piece. I'm gonna insert some video footage of me doing it on a mock-up because obviously from the top down you can't really see it that well. So you know, it's a different fabric, but I'm doing the same thing for my actual lace-up panels right here, which is placing the dot in the center of my Vario Creative tool, and then I just press, and then there is a hole. As easy as that. So I'm going to continue doing that for all of my pieces. One thing that I found out, you're going to find that there is obviously the hole that you just punched out, you're gonna sit in the lower part of my tool set. You wanna take that out every two hole punches or so, otherwise it's gonna get clogged up and not work properly anymore. So I quickly finished off all of the holes. As you can see, it's so pretty and perfect. The next step will be inserting the grommets and it's as easy as hole punching. So I'm just gonna take out the tools for the hole punching and then just use the one sitting right next to them. The green one goes on the bottom and the metal one goes on top. So as you know, there are two pieces to this, the washer and the grommet itself. The grommet itself obviously is gonna make the right side. So you want to put this into the right side facing. And then right here, you're gonna find also two sides. One side has like an edge on, on the inside here, and this is the side that needs to be visible. Now here as well, as I said, it's important to put the grommet onto the right side of the fabric. So I'm just gonna quickly do that. And now I'm gonna put the washer right on top here. And this just gets inserted in here. And the only thing that you need to do is push. You don't have to use a lot of force. It literally is so easy. And your grommet is in. And as you can see, it's in perfectly. Now you can also see why you have to check the side of the washer because the grommet kind of folds into the indent of the washer into that one side that I was pointing out. So let's continue doing that for all of the other holes. And now that that's done, you have two perfectly symmetrical lace-up panels with these grommets in there and they just look amazing. They also have some weight to them, so that's also really, really cool. I personally really enjoy using the Vario Creative Tool. It's something that just makes my work so much easier and I bet so many of you guys can also use a tool like this, like it's a multi-tool that you can use for so many things. And I know that a lot of you guys already asked about this tool, so finally I can show you. By the way, you can get the uh, grommets also in different colors. I have them in black and gold as well as the silver. So I chose the silver ones because I figure they just look the best with the turquoise kind of color of my dress. Obviously you can use whatever you want. And with these panels, we can continue working on the dress now. So the next step is to actually also sew the lace-up panel onto the piece. So I'm just gonna put right sides together of the 
laser panel and the back pieces. What you have to remember is that the laser panel is already finished on the upper and lower edge. So you want to have it sitting right where the stitching line is. So go your seam allowance towards the inside and that's where the laser panel starts. And then you can go ahead and fix them in place that way. I also added the last boning channel to the lace-up panel seam right here. I just top stitch it as I did with all of the other channels. It hides the seam pretty well, like I right on top stitched it onto here. And I'm quickly also going to insert my boning and then the outer bodice is completely done. So we can continue with the skirt and the lining. Next up, we're going to work on the skirt shell, which is a full circle skirt. And I managed to cut the circle skirt out of one piece with the left side seam being open. So this one right here, the lighter side. If you can't do that, you can also split the skirt into two pieces. You just have two side seams. That's fine too. You know, however you can work with your fabric. But if you can, obviously, it's better to have no seam apart from the zipper seam as you're just saving time. The the skirt itself is too big for the bodice, so you have to gather this part to fit the bodice. Just be aware that the lace-up in the back is gonna be a bit open. Obviously you can lace it as tightly as you want to, so maybe now is a good time to fit your bodice and see how much you lace it. So I'm gonna do that as well. Let's gather this. So you're just gonna use your biggest stitch, sew twice into the seam allowance and then you're gonna pull on the bobbin thread and then you're gonna gather. Okay, let's gather here. My machine already gathered this <laughs> a lot. So I'm gonna have to gather from here to here. So I'm gonna do 68 centimeters, which is plus seam allowance. And as you can see, my machine already gathered it more than I needed. So I can take out a tiny bit of the gathers already. So like that, and now I can adjust the in-between so that it looks nicely and evenly. The folds I'm gonna fix in place by just stitching into the seam allowance again so that it is, it's not gonna move at all. And with the skirt now prepared, we're going to attach the ruffles. I cut out two times on fold this piece. This goes from salvage to salvage. So you're basically just gonna cut out a piece that is 20 centimeters plus seam allowance on either end from salvage to salvage. That is what I have right here. We're gonna sew these panels together and this is where the zipper is gonna sit on the lighter side. So I want to have this right here where the seam is open and I think I'm gonna do French seams. So that means I'm just gonna put wrong sides together. So right next to this funny little color scheme here and then we're gonna flip it uh, right sides out and so again I'm gonna show you. And I'm gonna cut it down to like four millimeters, three, like this. And then I'm going to put right sides together and it's just easy to iron it again. And now you're gonna sew at five millimeters encasing the seam allowance on the inside. And let's iron it one last time. And now we have a super neat French seam on the inside of our ruffles, which you know, are see-through. So this is what it's gonna end up looking like from the right side. And I wanna go ahead and also hem my piece so that once I ruffle it, it's, it just doesn't lay flat anymore and I can't hem it that easily. So I'm just gonna do it now with my hemming foot. Basically what it, what it does is folding it five millimeters inwards twice and then just top stitching it. So if you don't have a hemming foot, you can just do it by hand. It does the same thing. And let's iron the hem. And now we want to ruffle the hem ruffle to fit the hem of the skirt, so the circle skirt. And this is like about twice as long as the hem of the circle skirt. I completely miscalculated and I don't know where this happened. For some reason I thought two, like it's so stupid because why would two panels ever be Ever, like in what world ever be enough <laughs> you need six panels I just recalculated I don't know where I was going with two but you're gonna need six panels for the hem so we're gonna do exactly the same as we did for the two panels that are already finished 
and just make them six, you know, in total. <laughs> so I'll be back with all six hem ruffle panels all put together and gathered, and then we're gonna put them together onto the skirt. <laughs> okay, I finished the skirt. I put the ruffles on here, as you can see, and that was uh, one big of a task. I, as you saw me pin the ruffles onto the hem, kind of just winged it and as it's like gathered a bunch it doesn't really matter if you have like somewhere a little bit more and somewhere a little bit less so I didn't measure at all like I winged it and then also obviously sewed it on and I'm probably just gonna overlock the inner seam because it's raw at the moment and I don't think that it's nice to put bias tape on here as it's just gonna get too thick so I'm just gonna overlock all around the hem and finish it that way and then the shell is already done we can put it on the bodice and work on the lining. And now we're finally able to put all of the pieces together. And the special thing here is that the side seam is the one that is open. I know that these two are technically also open, but this is the one that gets the raw edge of the skirt attached to. So we're gonna start right here. I'm gonna put right sides together and just go around the whole bodice. And on the other side, we're gonna attach this piece right here and that should be the four centimeters that I need right here and I can go ahead and put the skirt onto my bodice and I'm just gonna stitch right until where the lacing panel starts so right until here same to the other side here and between here and here I'm gonna finish the skirt with the lining and let's put this together Okay, next up, we're gonna actually drape this part right here. And I have cut my fabric on the bias so that it drapes nicer. I have this whole rest of my fabric on the bias. I had in total five meters and this is what's left. So that's not too much. If you don't have enough of that anymore, you can use the straight grain. I made a reel about how that works on my Insta. So you can go ahead and check that out. I'll link it down below. It doesn't drape as good, obviously, because it's on the straight grain. It kind of just makes folds, which is also fine if you like that look totally doable but obviously if you want to have like a real draped top here you want to drape on the bias so that's what we're gonna do there is not too much to this other than that I folded the fabric like 10 centimeters like this and went straight across from one side to the other and just fixed it in place for now with needles that's all I did <laughs> like so and my hope is because down here we have the lighter part of the fabric that it's gonna have a nice gradient from dark to lighter and basically what I'm doing is just I'm taking just a few centimeters below the first fold I'm taking another fold and put it up here And I think I'll only do one more and then I think it's enough. And now what I'll do, I'll just take my scissors and cut away the excess. I'm gonna start down here. And as you can see, I almost used all of it. So there is not much left. So now we're going to, the first thing that I'm gonna do is fold this uh, down here up into the piece. Fold this down under as well, so that it comes more or less to a point over here, like this. And now I have everything pinned onto my corset and I can go ahead and cut off the excess tail here.
And what I'll do now is basically fix this into place lightly because this is gonna be difficult because we're gonna have to sew the lining onto this still. So what I'll do, I'll go between the folds here and fix it onto the bodice, like all between the folds. With all of this in place, I can take off the dress and be able to still access my seam allowance here so that I can sew the lining in place. And once that is all like done and I remove the needles inside and stitch it in place by hand, this should look as nice as I draped it. So let's see. So what I'm gonna do next is put my lining together. I only had like black and I mistakenly chose a thick satin, which is not a lining fabric. On top of that, I have to add a blue layer to my skirt because it's see-through at the moment and I don't wanna have black as a backing. I wanna have the same as for my bodice, so I'm using the same fabric. Basically, I'm just gonna put the skirt together. It's a half circle skirt for the blue and the black. So I'm just gonna put the uh, front and then the back pieces together so I'll have it open on the side for the zipper and what I'll be doing as well is I'll have the seam allowance between the black and the blue skirt so they face each other so that I don't have to you know make them look pretty or anything like that because they're gonna not be visible at all on the inside you're gonna have a clean finish and then for the bodice lining it's the same as for my shell bodice apart from the back which is one piece so you just say one seam and that's that. No boning, no nothing, leave the left side seam open and that's it. You don't need to finish the edges, just leave them raw and you're good to go. So to put the skirt onto my lining, I know where my center front is and where my side seam in my skirt is, which is right here. And my center front is right here. And the side seam has to match up with my open side seam basically. And then this whole piece goes to the lacing panel and then to this panel as as well to stop in the other side seam here. So what I'll be doing is to just pin the side seam together here and work my way towards the other side. So like until right here, I'll have to stop sewing at one centimeter so that I have my seam allowance still here. And my other back has to start in the side seam as well. So right here, and it should stop from this seam here, the center back at the same distance as the other back right here. So it does, we have to also stop sewing at one centimeter here so that we can still use the seam allowance. I know this might seem a bit complicated, but if you, Take your time and think about it it makes total sense so we have our front it goes into the back we have our lacing panel that sits in the shell it goes into the other back and then the side seam which is open on both sides if we put this together it makes a whole bodice. With this prepared, we can sew the skirt onto the bodice and then sew the lining onto the shell. I'm gonna iron the seam allowance into the bodice. Okay, and with all of that prepared now, we can go ahead and put lining and shell together. So let's take my shell from the dress form. So what I'll do here is turn the draping down so that I can access the seam allowance. I have to be very careful while sewing this. I'll probably pin it out of the way so that I'll not have to worry that much, maybe like that. And now I have my seam allowance that I can work with and I'll just put the lining right on top here match up my center front and then I have a point here in the round area in the front dividing seam and then the in between. I'll work my way all the way to the back which I can probably prepare in ironing this seam allowance here where the lacing panel will sit towards the inside because then I can either top stitch it down or hand sew it easier. And then also on the other side here, it should have done that before. Okay, and now let's continue pinning these two pieces together. So as I said, this has to match up with the corner here. And then just to be safe, I'm gonna add a tiny bit more needles here in the round area where all of the draping sits. So this is gonna be somewhat of a thicker seam. 
And now we can go ahead and sew the neckline. Okay, to turn everything right sides out, I want to go ahead and cut into the round sections here just to make everything lay a bit smoother. And now comes the part where we hope and pray <laughs> that everything looks good. But it seems to have worked out fairly well here. We're gonna see the final result once we take out the needles here for the draping. So we can go ahead and iron. So I'm gonna start here in the center back and I'm just gonna iron this so that the ditch of the seam is only visible on the lining side. And then I'm gonna go over here and just try to not flatten the folds here too much, but I have to kind of iron at least here in the center front, maybe I should top stitch it down. Just fold it like this and then put needles in and go ahead and top stitch it. Okay, like that. And I think we can go ahead and remove all of the needles like that. And I think it's kind of perfect. So let's tackle this seam right here. So I overcomplicated the back seam and did an unnecessary elastics. I made some graphics to show you how it's actually done. Basically what you want to do is have everything right sides out and then fold the seam allowance of both the shell skirt and the lining skirt towards the inside and then just flip up the skirt and then you can sew the two skirts together. It's as easy as that. No need to overcomplicate anything here. Now the only thing that's left is adding the zipper. So this works the same way as all the other zippers and I think I'm not gonna film this for you. There are so many other videos. I'm gonna link one up here where I am putting in a zipper into a lined garment. They're all the same. You just put them in until the zipper notch and match everything up basically and then do the lining. So if you don't know how to put a zipper in, check this video out up here at this timestamp and I'll be back with the zipper in place and then we can finish the dress together sewing the side seams together of all the skirts individually. Okay, the zipper is in. As you can see right here, everything's closed up until the zipper notch. Now what we're gonna do for the skirt so that it is a, like that it's separate basically, I'm not gonna sew the georgette to the lining. I am going to cut towards the stitching line here you want to have the lining seam allowance face towards the inside because otherwise you're just going to see this ugly serge seam here and you're just going to put right sides together from hem all the way to the zipper notch where you can just pop out the seam allowance as you cut towards the stitching line and be sure to take out the zipper as otherwise it's just going to sit in between the lining and the shell and it's going to be visible and that just doesn't look nice. That means also that you're not going to be able to sew all the way towards the notch right here because the zipper is in the way so you're just going to sew as far as you can without getting anything else in your seam so make sure that this is all out of the way and I'm probably going to sew up until like one centimeter or 1.5 centimeter below that so I have a little bit more room to play around especially also for the seam of the shell as I'm trying to do French seams there so let's just close this seam And that is what it should end up looking like. So it's just gonna smoothly go towards the inside and hide underneath the lining. For the shell, you're gonna have to cut towards the stitching line as well. And now you wanna put wrong sides together, match up the hem and the ruffle seam, and you wanna stitch three millimeters, something like that, very close to the edge. And now you want to flip this so that the right sides match up now. And here you're going to see how much seam allowance you have left. So I have like, again, like three millimeters, something like that. And I have to sew right into here or start sewing right here all the way down to the hem. And then you're going to have a French seam with all 
seam allowances and all raw edges, overlocked edges on the inside like this. Let's iron this nicely and flat. I'm gonna leave this like weird as it's supposed to fall down. So if I iron this, it's just gonna iron a weird folds into it. So let's just leave it like that and then it's gonna do its own thing. And for the laser panel seam and the lining, I basically just pinned it onto the panel and then just restitched into that boning channel seam to fix everything in place. I made sure while pinning that the stitching line of that boning channel is covered so that I am catching the lining. So just make sure to also be careful here. If you don't like that, you can also do that by hand, but but, you know whatever you prefer and that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed i kind of forgot to record my outro so here i am if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that i post i post on sundays if you haven't already go ahead and follow my insta where i also have a reel on how i made the sleeves they're pretty simple but i didn't include them in this video because it's already so long anyways but it's super simple go check out that reel i'll link it in the description below as well the most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is to head over to my Etsy store where you also can find this pattern and so many others and last but not least a special thanks to all of my channel members you can get exclusive benefits through the link in the description down below so thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday bye guys